They say the Niger community, they talk say three Niger people, they are among other foreign nationals when we say they have been for the fresh xenophobic palaver on Tuesday for different locations of food bank. Mpumalanga province, South Africa. The national talk talk person of the Niger Union, South African Nusa Odefa, he said the Bege start for early hours of the morning. Tuesday Bege they come from the effort by President Muhammad Bwari and Sri Ramaphosa when we say the team say they look for solution to end the xenophobia palava. That kind of peace effort they see Bwari as he goes see Ramaphosa and do one town hall meeting with the Niger community. Group one visited the community members and taxi drivers. They go different areas for wood bank as they begin foreign owned business them and foreigners. Nobu Loret, Professor Wale Shoinka, for inside one interview with Plus TV Africa, a yarn as a matter take day for South Africa. There's some kind of collective uh, psychological warp, I think, in the makeup of today's South African. That warp has got to be addressed. We've got to speak very frankly about that. It's something which I have personally experienced, by the way. Okay. And if I have, on more than one occasion, you can imagine what the ordinary people have also experienced. I was nearly sent back uh, from the airport. Yeah. In fact, it happened twice. Uh, yeah. And the hostility by this, even this young uh, immigration officers. In fact, as it happened on that flight, the um, Nigerian ambassador or high commissioner was, and he even intervened. And it had to do with the immigration, of, immigration officer, a young woman misreading the date on the passport and insisted we had to, I had to go with them to the, um, to, the, um, to the immigration office. And walking along the way, because she kept looking, I was watching her, she kept looking at it, you know, this. I saw the moment when she realized she'd made a mistake. And then she flipped over the passport and saw that it was Nigeria anyway, and continued her march. We went up to the office, um, <clears throat> there was also a friend of mine, a lawyer, who went with us. It was quite a scene. Went to the office. I pointed out what I felt was the error, and fortunately, some other senior immigration officers recognized uh, me and came and saw it was. And they said, "No, no, no. This is okay." This girl, her attitude, just because of that passport, it was so hard. It was unbelievable. If I reached the as we were leaving. I said to her, you see, I said, I noticed when you saw that, uh, that you'd made a mistake. I said, why did you bring us? You needed to see how she fled up. And I said, I'm going to report you. He said, yes, this is mine. Yeah, take a look. Take a look. I was looking at the, um, so I was, you know, pacified by the senior people and the ambassador who were around to sleep. This happened to me there. It's not the first time. There was another time I was kept there. Uh, I was coming from the States at that time, and there was, uh, I didn't have a, uh, a visa. I was an emergency thing, I was invited for a lecture. In fact, it was in connection with Mandela's celebration. And I was assured there would be a visa waiting for me at the airport. I don't go anywhere, I'm not invited. <laughs> I was assured there'd be a visa there. Anyway, cut a long story short. It took Gasha Michelle. I was already on my way out. It took Gasha Michelle to intervene. I said, Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> you know who this is? And she raised hell with them. I spent about close to nine hours wow. at the airport. I just said, I am leaving here. And after that episode, I did not go to South Africa. I turned down invitations. Over nine invitations in two years, I said, I'm not I'm never stepping into this, your country again. I went, give the lectures. I said, I'll do anything for Mandela, his memory, and so on. For me, he's my avatar. I said, do it. But at the end of the lectures, I took my luggage to the lectures. Straight from the lectures, I went to the airport and left. I said, I'm dusting the feet of this guy. 
The Nobel laureate, a tell young South Africans, so made them not allow the apartheid experience to hinder their relation with other African nationals then. Africans, including some young people who do straightforward business, you know, contributing to that society, and the treatment they receive. There's something very serious. That's why I use the word warp. Is something has happened, I think, maybe as a result of the apartheid experience, a suspicion that other people are coming to treat them like, you know, the Second Boers class. treated okay. them, a kind of victim complex, maybe also aspects of Franz Fanon's theory about how uh, victims tend to victimize other victims okay. even much more than their own oppressors. It's something which, let's speak frankly, South Africans have to deal with. One is not denying that Nigerians themselves can be a handful outside. Mm. We know that. But then there are other nations also who are more than a handful in other societies.